structural factors. Reminds me of something I want to get out of here. You do not have to improve. The Americans have lost their sense of identity. With an assembly line or with something approaching assembly line. Process being offered to native societies whereby they are encouraged to mass produce their own. Yes. Spoke all this of those in telegraphies. And on the one hand this and on the other hand that. And the strange thing is this, that Microsoft programs, they're almost identical to ours. And you go sneaking in to steal the TV set. We have better stuff. You don't get it, Steve. That doesn't matter. We all might make a lot of money. Now I'm willing to do it. How about you? The kids, the, the, the awful struggle is the real pressure cooker situation is the kids who are the natural... It's trash, just as they do most TV shows. Uh -huh. Now, what will surround TV to turn TV into an art form? Something is waiting in the wings. Maybe it's holographic. It's a portable holographic camera. It'll project your image up to a half mile away. 100% audio send and receive capabilities. It's a prototype. Use will deceive the animal. Now it has a mini nuke battery, good for about eight minutes, but you can only use it once. So you better save it for when it counts. He's so thoughtful and serious. No, yeah, grim. Listen to this electronic world. Sensory commons. It's alive and what you're not paying any attention to, and that's the satellite environment. The classroom is not having any influence on you. The, sat the satellite environment is having a profound influence on you and your being here this afternoon. Sure, great. But I you know why? Could it be the long-awaited William Murderface side project, Planet Piss? But the satellites are also caught in what Tony calls the pencil box world. So you've got the slowest environment and the fastest people together. Now, so that's why the schools that, are going to get that is, called a, that is called a gap, a generation gap. People uh, need to meditate on the nature of gaps very much because in uh, between a wheel and an axle you have a gap, and without that gap there could be no wheel. When uh, the grease disappears and uh, the gap seizes up, you've got problems. How can we get one of those? I understand your anxiety, my friend. Johnny Cage's remark. No, he, he's, he's sure that it's tied to something. In the native society, every single thing in the society is related. Every plant. It's the incapacity of the visual man to relate to an acoustic right. world. Right. I live in a perpetual disagreement with my partner. Yes. The native art is essentially mass produced anyway. The fact that an individual may make it in no way detracts from the fact that he is making something which any member of the tribe can make. Now this is a paradox, that the earliest form of craft is really already a form of mass production. Yeah, without the assembly line. Though. Yeah, without the assembly line. And if handed a Western object, would copy it exactly. Do you want the assembly line? Well, we're sure we're taking it, aren't we? Yeah. That's all that is. <laughs> we don't have to. Well, we can't. No, I have it is, but it, it may relate. If you were given a catcher's mitt from a baseball uh, sort of equipment, he would copy the mitt even to the imperfections and right. the breakages into bits. Humpty Dumpty literally fell off the wall with print and the types were scattered hither and thither. Uh, print also created a new environment. Uh, any technology uh, creates a new environment, a new set of relationships among people. Print created the public. There was literally no public in Montaigne's time. It was just beginning to form with print. But, uh, well, that was the time when, when entertainment was all wrong. Yeah. Before printing, uh, no kind of handwriting was capable of creating a public. Every type of human resource, put it on the assembly line, it becomes a big, uh, honest to goodness, American citizen. You have multi-billion dollar environment of service images, vast affluence. He got two or three of them, then he realized there was one other thing. This is typical. He makes statement after statement after statement. He doesn't develop them. The guy who uh, went to the drugstore to pick up a few items for his wife and... Uh...
but they, they acquire wealth, they acquire wealth and independence and a bourgeois way of life. Well, it, it's a lie because I didn't say anything. Did you well, mouth it? Did you you it? What does mouth mean? It means move, move your lips. Move your lips. Lip. Yes, I move my lips. In the words you've been quoted as saying? No. Did you intend what, to get what, what, what did you what move were your you lips? thinking when you moved your lips? Oh. What is the nature of your thoughts, gentlemen, when you say fuddle duddle or something like that? God, you are. Uh, uh, on, another, on another occasion, so on. And I do that too, except that I am careful to make my statements annoying. Uh, after, uh, after one of, uh... they become Archie Bunkers. They were unaware of the effects. Doesn't remember he saws. He was not, not too happy, happy about, about having explained to him. Forgive me. Um, we were talking about a some astounding statement that some New York literary intellectual, this was the 60s, uh, had, uh, <laughs> uh, had made, I think it was uh, Susan Sontag on the occasion in which she said that, um, that white people are the cancer of the human race. I think that, that was, um, and it, Marshall's comment to that was, um, well, he said, you know, moral indignation is a standard strategy for endowing the idiot with dignity. Sir, I want to show everybody. <laughs> Stop, don't do it. That's not smart. It that's is. not good promotion, right? It is for everybody. No, it's not for everybody. Yeah, but how do they know? They, <laughs> Whoever you, can't you tell are people. watching this, you probably won't. You can see the paradox that as people's private morals decay, they demand paragons of virtue in public places. Well, that's what they're doing. They're demanding wouldn't like yes, it. Yes, you would. I remember <laughs> every single thing. I remember a few things exactly. I remember my daughter being born. I remember my dad spanking me. And I remember working at Rumors Comedy Club in Winnipeg. <laughs> and, uh, right. This is an experiment. It's never happened before. Right? Like, for example, these, these marches that just happened. Okay, people, the women were exhilarated. They were, they were almost hysterical. Okay? I don't think it had anything to do with feminism or anti-Trump or anything like that. I thought it was that women suddenly felt that surge of happiness again for being with other women. All right? I, and what, what, what I'm call, I was saying in the book, that we may have to accept a certain amount of tension between the sexes in the workplace. Right? The, the feminist idea that if we can just suppress men enough. Sure. Uh, that's what happened to the assembly line in America. Did he got two or three of them, then he realized there was one other thing. He couldn't remember, he sort of... They became Archie Bunkers. Well, Archie Bunker is an all-American. No, he's the American threatened. Banged his fingers on the... T and then suddenly there's a babe that leaned over to pick up something off the floor in front of him. He says, got it, bear aspirin. 